The best way, I think, to articulate the mission of the college is through that wonderful phrase from St. Anselm, faith seeking understanding. There's this thought that faith and reason conflict, or religion and science conflict. Uh, we think that's false. Come Holy Spirit. I'm trying to reanimate the intellectual tradition of the church. It's primarily motivated by charity, the love of God. From the Christian perspective, there's sort of a, a spark that's happening through the action of the Holy Spirit, I would say, in every class is meeting somehow of an integration of divine revelation and, and human wisdom. We all know more than we realize we know. But what's difficult to do is to unfold the understanding of those things. We read the great books, the classic texts, you know, the ancient, modern, medieval thinkers, um, but we read those texts under the guidance of the church, um, ordered towards the truth. All of the liberal arts that we study here are seen as ways into philosophy and theology. So they're studied for their own sake, but they're also studied to, uh, to assist with the, uh, the advanced work in philosophy and theology that our students do. Our teachers, which we call tutors, um, they don't give lectures. Their role is really to guide the discussion. If you really want students to make the truth their own, they need to wrestle with it. They in each class need to be fully present, fully engaged. They see that that's the only way they will get what they need to get out of this education. My learning is my own, you know, and all these other people that I really admire and respect are here with me learning the same kinds of things, and you're allowed to, to, to question everything, and that's what you're meant to do. I hope that we're, we're showing our students what the goal of their education is, that it's not, it's not just to, to sit in a classroom, but it's to bring what we do in the classroom to bear, to bear on the way we live. I think imbued with that spirit, they go into the world and really, I think, are doing wonderful things uh, for their fellow citizens, for their communities, and for the church. I think the crisis in our civilization is more intellectual than political. And that, in turn, was the thing we were mainly responding to. We thought that rather than respond by trying to reinstitute the Catholic College of the 1950s, we would try to found a school based on a much more radical view <laughs> of Catholic liberal education. The program of the college was not our invention, but it goes all the way back to the Greeks and to Aristotle, Plato in, his, in a way, and certainly down through the Middle Ages and especially through St. Thomas. Well, our founding president was Ronald P. MacArthur. He was a, a teacher of mine at St. Mary's College where I did my undergraduate work. Dr. MacArthur had a giant personality. He could engage an audience in an idea in such a way that the audience listened and were, they were moved. I have vivid memories of him teaching a senior theology class that I uh, attended. He was a vibrant, dynamic teacher and really was successful at engaging students in the learning process. We did have, I guess, different personalities and different, different uh, talents. Um, Peter De Luca, for example, was uh, trained in business and he, uh, he was competent in that field and very able in that, very successful in that. Mark Berquist uh, was a master of Thomistic philosophy and theology. The practical problems of starting a college seemed absolutely overwhelming to most people. 
The California campus actually started with two phases. We had the, the campus in Malibu Canyon and we have a campus in Santa Paula. And the Malibu campus, the focus was on, we had a campus and it was a beautiful campus. We didn't have to do any development of that campus, but we had to develop the curriculum. They had an outline of what the curriculum was gonna be, but they're always just staying a step ahead of us, getting the curriculum filled out in its detail. Ferndale Ranch was offered to us as a gift, of the, the land as a gift. But then we began to build the buildings one at a time and we were able to find the, uh, the funding, sometimes scrambling for it. Daniel Donahue, who was the president of the Dan Murphy Foundation, and Richard Grant, who was on the board, invested in the college before the first students even graduated. They saw what this college could be. We built the master plan pretty much exactly as it was originally designed. I first discovered the college 28 years ago when I met Tom, Dylan, and his wife, Terry. We became fast friends and my admiration for Tom, my respect for him, everything he did was for the college. And I can't even imagine the college getting going without someone like Tom. That's, that's what he did for 18 years, and he gave every single bit of energy, intellect that he had to bringing the college forward. I think the interesting thing with Mike is his management style was totally different than Tom's. Mike was a delegator and has done a wonderful job of lifting other people in the organization to much more responsibility. I don't think anybody realized how good he was gonna be at his job. I thought we needed more new blood and energy, and of course Scott Tarici came in and he has been outstanding. The seven years has been a very exciting time at TAC. There's been challenges, like fighting the HHS mandate, which was a big issue that we successfully overcame. Challenges like the Thomas Fire that almost engulfed the Santa Paula campus. The excitement of the expansion, which is to go into Northfield, which also had some challenges in terms of both acquiring the physical property, but also getting permission to grant degrees and hold the educational program in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. We're often asked the question uh, whether the programs and the two campuses is going to be the same. And I think it'd be important for people to know that um, there's still one instruction committee that governs both campuses. So there'll be no curricular changes without both campuses agreeing. So our, our programs are going to be exactly the same and the methods going to be exactly the same. Um, and that's built into the governance plan to keep it that way. With the four seasons, we don't have the same recreation as California but we have great resources to complement the change of season. So we have a gym with a basketball court and climbing wall and a wonderful swimming pool um, to make a lot of recreation available during the winter. We also have the Connecticut River, um, which is wonderful for kayaking during the warmer months, and students have taken great advantage of that. One of the reasons I'm very excited about Northfield is the expansion of this educational opportunity to more students who then will go into the workplace, culture, and a variety of vocations. So we have a number that have become priests and religious. They're helping the church. We have those that are defending religious liberty uh, through the law, defending life, teaching, participating in the legal profession, and I think sometimes not fully understood, but also participating in business. We live in a world that more and more is moved by passion, an appetite where reason doesn't prevail, that world needs our graduates. How many students when they go off to college say, I'm going to college because I want to grow in virtue? And how many students when they finish their four-year college program can say, I grew in virtue over those last four years? I want to not only go out and you know find a job and pursue some career, but I want to pursue a career for Christ. It gives you a purpose that's so much higher than just, you know, living for day-to-day -day things. As we celebrate the 50th anniversary of Thomas Aquinas College, 
I want to take the opportunity to thank all of the parents and students, our graduates, our faculty and staff, benefactors and board members who over 50 years have ensured the success and well-being of Thomas Aquinas College. And I invite those same friends and benefactors to stay with us for the next 50 years and ensure the continued success of the college and our continued ability to bring genuine Catholic liberal education to young people and to continue uh, having a real impact in the country and in the church. Thomas Aquinas College, through its graduates, is helping to renew the face of the earth. Thank you.